We are in our fourth week of what we call the Apostles' Creed. Tayo po ay pinag-aaralan natin ang creed na to. And if you are here for the first time, wag kayo mag Even if we are in the fourth week, I know ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon is something that stands alone and it will help you in your life nevertheless. Uh, ang creed po, pag sinabing Apostles' Creed, this creed was not written by the Apostles. Ang nagsulat po nito we are the bishops, yung mga unang bishops, na sila yung parang kumbaga sila yung tinuruan or na disciple nung mga apostles. These bishops wrote the Apostles' Creed a few years, mga 100 years or 150 years after the apostles. At ang rason kung bakit nila sinulat ito ay dahil at that point in time, marami na pong pumapasok na mga maling teachings mula sa mundo at nasisira na yung mga belief systems ng mga early Christians. May mga belief system na nagsasabing, Jesus is not God, Jesus is only man, or being man is evil, so Jesus never became man. God lang siya, pero hindi siya naging man. And so we have to, uh, they had to correct all these teachings. They had to defend the teaching and the belief about who Jesus is, who, who the Holy Spirit is, and who God the Father is. And that's why uh, ginawa nila itong Apostles' Creed. Now, the word creed, aga-aga, no? The word creed means credo. Pag sinabing credo, ang ibig sabihin ng credo, it's Latin for I believe. At kapag dinideklara ito ng mga unang Christians, they are actually declaring what they believe about who God is laban sa kung anong sinasabi ng mundo sa kanila. So, they would always stand up in unison and they would declare, this is what we believe. And that's in unison with them, yun din ang ginagawa natin ngayon for the past few weeks. And that's what we're gonna do today. We will be reciting the Apostles' Creed together. But before we do that, I need you to realize this. Whatever you believe will influence your behavior. Kung anong paniniwala mo, yun ang pamamaraan ng buhay mo. And you know, this became so clear to me this week kasi nung lunes, nag-meeting kami nung aking mga pinsan. Nag-meeting kami dahil kailangan namin pag-usapan yung estate ng lolo namin. Now, itong picture na to, nagtotow sila for, ano, hindi, wala pa akong iniinom dyan. Tubig lang po yan, ano, baka yung iba sinasabi nyo, nagtotoast ako. But I was drinking water. But uh, dito sa picture na to, Makikita mo kung sino yung mga pinsan ko, kung sino yung mga kamag-anak ko. Kami yung mga medyo matataas ang... Oh. Anyway, ayan, ngayon, ngayon kilala nyo na kung sino kami. Alam nyo, pinag-usapan namin yung, yung, uh, yung estate ng aming lolo. Yung lolo ko, siya yung, yung naka-uniforme dito. Kita nyo kung walang sombrero, mataas din ang ano yan eh. Oh. Parang tatay ko rin yan eh. Mana-mana lang yan. Kasama niya nga pala si MacArthur oh, sa Pangasintan nangyari ito. Ngayon, pinag-uusapan namin ng lolo namin at yung estate niya. After yung meeting namin, sabi nung, nung pinsan kong isa, yung nasa puno, nung si Ricky, sabi niya, alam niyo bang kwento ni Tatang? Tatang ang tawag namin. Alam niyo bang kwento ni Tatang sa akin nung bata pa tayo? Meron daw silang ano, magkakapatid daw na yung, okay, yung lolo ng, yung tatay ng lolo ko, Okay, lolo ko siya, yung tatay niya, magkakapatid daw silang tatlo. Mga katipunero daw sila. At dahil, siyempre, magagaling na katipunero, lahi-lahi lang yan. <laughs> dahil magaling silang katipunero, hinahabol-habol silang mga Espanyol. So, ang ginawa ng magkakapatid, para hindi sila mahuli at hindi masaktan yung kanilang mga pamilya, ang ginawa nila, pinalitan nila yung kanilang last name. Ibig sabihin, hindi po isleta ang pangalan ko. Ang pangalan daw namin ay Roque. Yun po ang sabi nila. Ang nangyari, naglipatan, yung isa pumunta ng Laguna, yung isa pumunta ng, yung isang isleta pumunta ng Cebu, yung isa na natili sa Bulacan. Yung linya namin, yun yung nasa Bulacan. Ang daming isleta na nasa Laguna at ang daming isleta na nasa Cebu. Meron ngang Dennis isleta na nasa Cebu. 
Oo, hindi ko alam kung pastor din siya o hindi. Pero ang, kat- ang katotohan na lang sa, 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 sa totoo lang, when that happened, medyo nayanig kaming lahat. Kasi, biro mo, Denny, Pastor Dennis Roque. General Chad Roque. Hindi isleta. So, medyo nayanig kami. Pero, it don't on me having thought about it. Sabi ko, anong paniniwalaan ko? What will I believe and how will I behave? Not that there is anything wrong with the name Roque, pero I have been born an isleta. I believe I'm an isleta. I will live as an isleta. What you believe will affect how you behave. And so, how you accept your belief will change also how you behave. And that's why when we declare itong Apostles' Creed na to, ganun din tayo. Ang dapat mayanig ay yung hindi katotohanan. Ang dapat manatili ay yung katotohanan. And that's why when we stand up and we declare the Apostles' Creed together, and you say, I believe! Alam nyo na kung bakit. I believe. Pag sinabi mo yon, you truly believe in the truth of who you are as a follower of Jesus Christ. So in unison with the early church, may I invite everyone to please stand up. Join, join tayo. Sama-sama tayo. I-declare natin ang Apostles' Creed. Now, kung kayo ay number one, hindi kayo taga rito. Number two, hindi kayo, palagay nyo, hindi kayo Christian. You don't have to join us. Okay? Mag-lipsync kayo, okay lang. Kung kayo naman naniniwala, sabay-sabay tayo. Okay? The Apostles' Creed, sabay-sabaw. Number one. The Apostles' Creed, one, two, three. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, we thank you for what we believe, and we thank you that what we believe in is based on the truth, your word. We pray na, Lord, burn into our hearts the truths about what we believe so that we will not forget it and we will be able to defend our faith whenever anyone tries to destroy it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may take your seats. So we're talking about the Apostles' Creed. We are on our fourth week. Ang first week, we talked about God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. The second week, we talked about Jesus, the Son, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, the Lord, Jesus Christ. The third week, pinag-usapan natin the Holy Spirit. Hindi siya multo, hindi siya power, hindi siya force be with you. Now, in studying about the Holy Spirit, uh, about, the, about the first three topics, we realize, ang pinag-uusapan pala natin is the Holy Trinity. Three persons, one God. And within that Trinity, they had a relationship among the three persons. Let me tell you this. Hindi ka kailangan ni God. Sakit nun, ano? What am I saying here? God does not need a relationship with you. Because in Himself, as God, He already has a relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is a blessing for us to have a relationship with that God. And it is He who calls us to have that relationship. Now, speaking of relationship, yun po ang namumuno dun sa tatlong God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit. And after speaking about it for the past three weeks, we come to realize our relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the vertical relationship, medyo namuo na yung belief natin tungkol sa Kanya. That's why this week onward, ang pag-uusapan natin is the, our relationship na horizontal naman. And that's why we're talking about the Holy Catholic Church and the communion of saints. Alam nyo, for the past weeks, 
Tuwing nagde-declara tayo ng Apostles Creed, ang daming nagte-text sa akin, ang daming nag-e-email, ang daming nag-Facebook, sinasabi nila, Pastor, can you please explain, ano ba yung Catholic Church? Tama ba na ginagawa natin sa church? Dinideklara natin na Catholics tayo. Is that right? Tama po ba yun? Do you understand what it means when you say, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church? Holy means you are set apart. But what does Catholic Church mean? Catholic, for your information, means universal. It is the unified body of believers of Jesus Christ. Ibig sabihin nun, kung sino man yung naniniwala na si Jesus ay Lord, thank you, at tagapagligtas, Savior, then he's Catholic. Now look at the person beside you. Does he look Catholic? Unang-una, do you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If you do, guess what? You belong to the bigger body of Christ, the universal church that declares that He is Lord and Savior. So you are Catholic. Now, yung isang Catholic, yun yung tinatawag na Roman Catholic Church. Pag sinabing Catholic, small letter C, yun yung universal. Pag sinabing big letter C, Miski wala yung word na Roman, yun yung Roman Catholic Church. Ano yun? Yun yung church na ang bishop nasa Rome at ang tawag sa bishop na yun ay yung Pope. Sa kanya sila nakatingin, sa kanya, sa kanya siya, sila kumukuha ng direction tungkol sa religion nila. That's the Roman Catholic Church. Tayo, Catholic Church. And by the way, we are an evangelical church which means we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and we believe in spreading that gospel. Kaya nga evangelical to spread the word. Ano naman yung the communion of saints? Communion of saints means the act or the instance or yung moment of sharing. Sharing what? A common salvation in Jesus Christ. So ganun din yun. Pag sinabing we have a communion of saints, ibig sabihin nun, we believe in one commonality. Si Jesus Christ, siya yung Lord. And so, ano yung saints na yan? Sino yan? Hindi po yan yung mga nakastatua na saints. Yung saints, sino yon? Kayo. Tayo. We are all saints. Saint Dominic. Ah, galing ha? Saint, Saint Rina. Ay, babae dapat. Yun, Rina. Saint Bernard. We are all saints. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Tignan mo. Mukha bang santo? <laughs> hindi porkit walang puti, hindi santo yan. Yung puti na yon sa painting lang po yun. Para ma-identify ni Nana, si Saint Peter yan. Okay? So, we're saints. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you have been saved, He is slowly, the Holy Spirit is changing you from within. There is transformation happening. You are holy. Yung holiness na yun, Saint ka na. Galing? Saint Bernard. Okay. Ngayon, balikan natin yung church, Catholic Church, Communion of Saints, maraming churches. In fact, yesterday or last Friday, nagkaroon ng tinatawag na ribbon cutting nung building natin. Dun sa ribbon cutting na yun, ang mga guests were yung, uh, yung mga construction workers, yung staff dito sa Every Nation, Victory, Tapos some government officials. Tapos we had some of those yung mga nag-donate ng mga kwarto. Yun, sila yung mga nandoon. So, we came together. We, we came together as a u- universal church. In fact, yung mga nandito sa right picture, syempre ako yun. <laughs> Pero yung katabi ko, mga ano yun, mga, mem- mga pastors from CCF, Christ, Christ's Commission Fellowship. We had bishops and pastors from other uh, evangelical churches. We had pastors from, from uh, New, New Life Alabang. We had bishops who were here. Why? We came together because we had one commonality, Jesus Christ is Lord. Pero ang usapan, we are united because of that commonality, Jesus is Lord, but we are not uniform. You get the meaning of that? 
Ang discipleship dito sa victory, iba sa discipleship ng CCF, iba sa discipleship ng GCF. We don't have to be uniform in the way we do discipleship, but we are uniform, we are united in our belief that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what it means. You know, uh, as a church, God has a specific calling for each of the churches. Sa ating discipleship, honor God, make disciples. Discipleship tayo. Alam nyo, many churches have their own callings from God and that does not make them unchristian or un- un-Catholic church. Yun ang tawag sa kanila ng Panginoon. And so, makikita natin to even in the United States, yung mga simbahan doon, pagandahan ng mga senyas, doon nila napapakita kung sino sila as a church. In fact, I have a few uh, signs here. I, I uh, checked it out. Honk if you love Jesus. Text while driving if you want to meet Him. <laughs> so, kanya-kanya sila mga pakwela na, ng mga signs para ma-attract nila yung mga gustong suma- magsimba. Ito, isa pang sign doon. Do you know what hell is? Come, hear our preacher. Mami, ang makukuhan niyo kung ibig sabihin nun. Ito, ito, ito. Medyo okay lang to. Try Jesus. If you don't like Him, the devil will take you back. Pasikatan sila ng mga sinasabi nila. Ang dami nito. Namili lang ako na ito. Itong next na ano, palagay ko dito to sa 4 p.m. tagli service eh. Having trouble sleeping? We have sermons. Come here one. Mm-mm. Parang gusto kong ipaskil dyan sa labas. Now, these are what churches do, but the fact of the matter, hindi pa natin na-define, ano ba talaga yung church? What is church? Na-define natin Catholic, na-define natin communion of saints, but what do we mean by church? But more importantly, okay, meron tayong magkukuhang kaalaman tungkol sa church, but more importantly, what does it mean to us? How will that change our behavior kapag nakuha natin yung kaalaman na yun? Okay lang ba malaman natin kung ano yung church? Or does it need to do something in our lives? Remember what we said. Our belief needs to change our behavior. And so we go to Matthew chapter 16. Titignan natin kung saan unang sinabi or ginamit yung salitang church. And this is Jesus Christ himself speaking. He's talking to his disciples. Sinabi niya, who do the people say that I am? Tapos tinanong niya, who do you say that I am? Sumagot si Peter, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Tapos sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, ito yung sagot niya, I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. Ibig sabihin ng church, ekklesia. Ekklesia is a Greek term, actually two, two words, Greek words, ek and Kaleo. Ek and kaleo. Ang word na ek means out of. Ang word na kaleo means to call. Put them together to call out of. Now, ano yung kinukall out of? This, this verse ecclesia or this word ecclesia was also used by Stephen. Pero ang gamit ni Stephen was the word congregation. Ang reference ng paggamit ni Stephen, yung martyr, ginamit niya yun, pointing back to the, the, the community ni Moses na inilibas ni God from Egypt. So what he was saying was, Ecclesia, kayo na kinuha ko from bondage, from servitude, from slavery, in Egypt, you are now called out from slavery and you now are my people. Remember in Exodus, dun sinasabi ni God, you are my people, you are my people, you are my people, and I am your God. So basically, that is what the history of the word church comes from. You are being called out. Now, if you consider yourself a member of church, you need to ask yourself, what has God called you out from? What sin were you into that God, nung naging Christian ka, born again, kinuha ka na doon, you were called out, tapos sabi niya, akin ka, hindi ka na doon. What is your sinful nature in the past? Lagi ka bang worrier? Lagi ka bang arrogant? Ikaw ba'y nakalive-in? 
Tapos tinatawag mo sarili mo as Christian, well, guess what? God is calling you out from that. Are you an adulterer? Ikaw ba'y malaking utang mo? Ikaw ba'y bayulente? Nagmumura? Paglaseng galit? God is calling you out from that and saying, akin ka na, you do not have to behave that way anymore because you are mine. So you're being called out. If you consider yourself a member of the church. Now, First Peter, nandito si Peter, Peter. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen people. Pinili ka, chong! Pinili ka! Tignan mo katabi mo, mukhang pili. O mani, kasuy o pili. Okay, hindi nakuha. Okay, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Abay, royal ka na, pare ka pa. You are a holy nation. You are set apart. Ibig sabihin ng holy, set apart. Nation, isa kang bansa. You are part of a nation of people. A people belonging to God. Now, itong, itong salitang people, ang ibig sabihin niyan, hindi tayo, hindi tayo building. A church is not a people, uh, is not a building. A church is a people. So yung katabi mo, church yan. In fact, tignan mo, hindi mo kang halo black yan. Hindi mo kang halo black yan. The church is the people inside that structure. So it's not a building. Nasanay lang tayo na I am going to church. Now, the people, they're not a special time. Ibig sabihin, yung church, hindi yan oras na pupunta ka dun sa building. So, pag sinabi mong pupunta ako sa church ng alas 4, teka muna, hindi special moment yun na nasa samahan ka ng mga tao. It's not a special time and it's not a special experience. It's not, a, it's not an experience that you are... You know, these three statements, ang turo niyan... It's telling us na itong mga to, mga pinupuntahan or something we go for. We go for the experience. We go for uh, one hour and a half. We go to the building. That's not the meaning of church. Church is the people. In fact, if you look at the next word, it says belonging. Ibig sabihin, there is some kind of uh, an ownership. There is a relationship between the one who owns and the one who belongs. Which means belonging, you need to start asking yourself, bakit ka nandito? Are you here because you come to church? Are you here because you have to be here for an hour and a half because it's an oblig- obligation? Kasi sabi ni nanay, kailangan. Eh, kung hindi, walang lunch bukas. Are you here because you want to experience being with people? Ang sarap ng feeling. Jesus at the center of it. Para nakakaiyak, Lord. Feeling, experience. No, that's not it. It's not going to have it. When you say it belong, it means sharing. It means sharing life with one another. You're actually sharing life with one another. Ask yourself, pag nandito ka, one and a half hours, are you sharing life with one another? Pag nag 3 to 1 tayo, after how many minutes, nakaupo ka na? Tama? Did you share your life with one another? Diba? Nag-share kami. Are you sharing life? Yung, yung word na one another, in the, in the Bible, in the New Testament, lumabas yan at least 59 times. Yung 59 times na yan, pag tinignan mo, it always says it's about a relation. You know, kung titignan lang natin yung salitang church, hindi natin ma-define eh. The, re- the, 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 the manner we will understand, ano ba talaga yung church is kung paano sinulat ng mga apostles kung ano ang nangyayari sa loob ng church. And this is what they, they wrote. In the manner of humility, at least 15% nung 59 times was on humility. And anong sabi doon? Wash one another's feet. Huwag kang prideful. 
Ibig sabihin niyan, pag may dumi, ikaw magpulot. Pag meron kang nakita dyan, aba, wala ah. Pag, pag may nakita ka dyan, ikaw ang pumulot. Kasi, church mo to eh. Huwag mong iintayin yung usher. If you consider yourself a member of this church, hindi ka lang uupo dyan for one hour and a half. Ba't parang tahimik kayo? <laughs> Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, hindi yan galit. Love ka niyan. Passionate lang siya ngayon. Okay. Give preference to one another in honor. Pagbigyan mo na. Kinuha niya yung favorite chair mo. Pagbigyan mo na. I-honor mo yung tao na yun. Don't be haughty. Be of the same mind. Serve one another. Be subject to one another. Regard one another as more important than you. Wala nang pataasan. Hindi mo alam yung nag sa sa'yo. CEO yan ng kumpanya nagpahambol yung tao na yan. Ikaw ngayon ang nagpapataas. If you're a member of the church, humble yourself. Ano pa? Love. Oh, ito yung mga kabataan dyan. Yan, kayo, itong hilig nyo. Oh, love one another. Ilang beses yan. No? Ang daming uh, verses. No? Through love, serve one another. Ayan na naman. Ad- tolerate one another in love. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Uh, Oh, medyo ano hinan natin yun. Be devoted to one another. In love. Next! <laughs> unity. Okay, napakarami ng unity. Oh. Oh. Be at peace with one another. Accept one another. Don't bite, devour, or consume. Oh, wag mong kakagatin yung katabi mo. You, you see, there's relation. Gently, patiently, tolerate the preacher. Kita nyo yun? Ayan oh, number... Num- uh, number eight, be kind to him, tender-hearted, forgiving. You, if you notice, everything is about relationship. And that's what happens in church. It's about shared lives. You have to ask yourself, now that you know what a church is, do you just go to church or you actually belong to it? Kapag umalis ka dito mamaya, unya, unya. Paglabas mong ganyan, tapos nag-absent ka ng tatlong beses, meron bang maghahanap sa'yo na absent ka? Meron bang makakakilala sa'yo na, uy, wala si Bernarda, kulang ang saints. <laughs> Pag may difficulty ka, at medyo magbibitay ka na, meron bang may alam na papagprayan ka? Or are you going to be alone in that room not knowing who's going to call you? Nobody. Why? Because you only came here for an hour and a half. Three to one na lang nga, 30 seconds pa lang umupo ka na. Hindi mo nakilala yung katabi mo. Why? Because you just came to church. You don't belong to it. My prayer is, before you leave here, you tell yourself, Oh, Cristiano ko, and I belong to this church. I know people in this church. I pray for people in this church. And people in this church pray for me. Malalaman mo kung miyembro ka ng isang simbahan. Tignan mo calendar mo. Kung ang calendar mo ganito, medyo pagtaka ka. Baka hindi ka miyembro ng simbahan. Attendi ka lang. Mas marami ka pang date kay Rina, kay Gina, at saka kay Tina. Pagkain nyo, tinapay lagi. Oh, so, look at that. If, ang problema niyan, kung minsan wala pa yan. Kung minsan wala pa yung victory group. Eh, ano ka na lang? Shared experience. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's wrong Maybe you're in a foreign land and you don't have a church where you are. But there's something different that you are actually present among God's people. Yung iba, one hour and a half na lang nga dito, tulog pa, tulog pa. <sighs> Lord, you know my heart. <laughs> Ephesians 2.19, sabi, So then, Ngayon na alam na natin yan. So then, you are no longer strangers. Hindi ka na extraterrestrial. Hindi ka na alien. 
but you are fa- fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. If you believe in itong sinasabi natin. That's what a church is. Now, sino naman ang head ng church? You know that this is a church, you are the church. Sino ang head? Sino ang head ng church? <laughs> Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, the same verse says, I will build my church. Kay ninong church daw yon? Kay Dennis? Hindi, kay Jesus Christ. So, sino ang head ng church? Well, sabi sa Colossians, and he is the head of the body, the church. Sino yon? Yung hina yan, si Jesus Christ yan. Ang head ng church, hindi yung nanay ni Jesus. Hindi si Pedro. Hindi si, si sino pa ba? Hindi si James. Hindi si John. In fact, ang tawag nila sa sarili nila, servants. In their writings, they are servants. They don't call themselves the head. Ang mas head pa nga kay Peter, si James pa. Hindi si Peter, kung titignan natin. So, who's the head of this church? Is it Dennis? No. Is it Pastor Steve? No. Kilala niyo si Pastor Steve? O, kita niyo, yung iba sa inyo, hindi niyo kilala. Mabuti yun. Ibig sabihin, yung founder ng Victory, hindi pa importanteng tao. Okay lang sa kanyang, hindi siya kilala. Bakit? Sino dapat makilala? Si Jesus! Hindi si Dennis. I'll tell you this. Don't you ever, ever, ever put your, your assurance of salvation on me because I cannot save you. Only Jesus can. Don't you ever, I can pray for you and I can counsel you, I can cast out demons from you in the mighty name of Jesus, not in my name. Si Jesus po ang head ng church natin. Okay po ba yun? Ngayon yung tulog, pakibulungan na lang mamaya. At baka lumapit na naman sa akin, sabihin ako ang head. So how does this, how does this truth about Jesus being the head of the church? Paano papalitan yung, paano babaguhin yung inyong behavior? Come to me to pray, yes, but believe in Him to do the miracle. Come to me, I'll pray for you, but believe in Him to answer your prayers. Believe in Him that He will be the one to heal. And by the way, you don't have to come to the pastor. We have leaders here who can actually lay hands on you. Bakit? The Holy Spirit who is in the pastor is the same Holy Spirit who is in you. In fact, you don't even have to come to us. Magpray ka kaya. Lord, heal me. You can pray for yourself. <laughs> Look at the same Holy Spirit who is in me is in you. If you believe, if you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ has sent the Holy Spirit to you, dwells in you, is cleansing you, sanctifying you. May temptation ka sa buhay mo, huwag kang pumunta kay Dennis. Pag-pray mo, Holy Spirit, you have the power to make me say no to sin. I say no to sin by the name of Jesus. I cannot say no to sin for you. You have to do it yourself. Okay? So, we know what the church is. We know who the head of the church is. Now, ang next na tanong natin, ano ang purpose? Bakit? Tanong nyo, tanong nyo. Bakit pinili pa ni Jesus na magkaroon ng church? Kung kaya niyang sabihin in one word, lahat kayo, Christian na ngayon ngayon. And everyone will become Christian. One word lang yun. Only say the word. Pero bakit na pinili? May simbahan pa. Bakit hindi na lang niya tinawag yung mga angels? Angels! Come and make everybody Christian. Huh? Okay, go, go. But hindi niya ginawa? Well, for one, the, the angels, they don't know what mercy is. Because they never experienced that mercy. Kasi hindi naman sila nag-sin eh. Tayo alam natin yung mercy. 
yung forgiveness from sin, alam natin yun. Kasi sinners tayo. Sila hindi nila alam yun. So pag pinadala ni, ni Jesus, yung mga angels, yung mga angels, hindi maka, uh, ano tawag dito, hindi nila, walang compassion. Bakit? They don't know what it means to sin. And it's not their fault. Buti nga, hindi sila sinners. Tayo yung sinners. But Jesus used the church for a purpose. And the purpose is, number one, ministry to Him. Now, let me remind you, God does not need us to worship Him. By Himself, alam niya, He is Almighty God. Alam niya, He is omniscient God. Alam niya, He is an awesome, powerful, beautiful, great God. Alam niya na yun. He does not need us to tell Him that. Actually, when we, when we worship Him, it's for our benefit. Para alam natin, Lord, grabe, ganyang kalaking God ko. Thank you, may God ako na kagaya mo. It's for our benefit. He doesn't need our, secure na siya sa sarili niya. But, He also gives us that ability to worship. Sabi sa Hebrews chapter 12, Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Are you grateful that you are a member of a kingdom that cannot be shaken? Yes. Na, 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 maka-earthquake man ngayon! Alam niyo na kung bakit. Maka-earthquake man ngayon, mag-gumuho tong building natin, lahat tayo, awanan. <laughs> Nalpasan! Pag wala na, Aren't you glad that the place where you're going cannot be shaken as this place? That that place will never, ever be shaken by any evil, by any calamity. You belong to that kingdom if you have Jesus Christ in your life. So, sabi dyan, be grateful. And how do you show your gratefulness? Offer to God acceptable worship. I-offer natin yung worship natin. Hindi yung, ha? Oh, may oras pa. May two minutes pa bago mag-umpisa ang worship. Ha? Oh, may five minutes pa bago mag-umpisa yung word of God. Merienda muna ako. Sarap ng turun eh. No. Go and give thanks to God. Worship Him with reverence. And oh, wow, Lord, you're such a mighty God. I'm such a small person and yet you love me. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you in my life. It's not a feeling. Hindi feeling pong worship. The feeling can come because of the worship, but yung umiiyak-iyak ka dahil nafe-feel mo, ibe-bless ka ni Lord, eh, baka feeling lang yun. Real worship is directed towards God, not towards yourself. Wow, sasagutin ang prayer ko ni Lord dahil kinakantahan ko siya. Come on, hallelujah. That's not worship. Sentro mo, ikaw eh. Anong kanta natin kanina? Jesus, be the center of it all. Ganda, no? Siya ang sentro ng lahat. From beginning to the end, Siya ang sentro. From 4 p.m. to 4 mm, to 5 whatever, siya ang sentro. Tithing, worship yun. Announcement, worship yun. Video, worship yun. 3 to 1, worship yun. Giving, sinabi ko na ba yung giving? Giving, worship yun. Greet the person beside you, worship yun. Everything to the Lord. Ngayon, pag sinabi yun, corny naman itong mga to. Ikaw na naman ang sentro nun. Hindi ka nag-worship tung sandaling yun. One and a half hours lang tayo dito. We come here to worship God. Secondly, we come to worship, we come to the service, we come to church, we are the church, para ma-nurture tayo. Tayo naman ang namiministeran. How? As we worship God, God worships to us through the Word. Pag lumabas yung Word, nabibless tayo. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 says, yung mga apostles, yung mga prophets, yung mga evangelists, yung mga teachers, yung mga pastors, ibinigay na daw ni God dyan para saan? So that ma-equip yung kanyang mga 
tao. His people will be equipped for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So, may equip kayo. Ito yung sinasabi ko ngayon, you are now being equipped. Ginagamit ako ng Holy Spirit ngayon para i-equip kayo dun sa mga sinasabi ko. You are being equipped with the truth. Why? Not for your own. So that, na equip kayo so that ma-build up ulit yung church. So, ang tanong, yung mga natututuhan natin dito, ilang taon ka na nandito, meron ka bang na-encourage? Nakatabi mo dyan, alam mo, nabasa ko, narinig ko kay pastor, the Holy Spirit is in you. May nabibuild up ka ba na ganun? O mag-isa ka lang nakaganyan? Taga naman mag-umpisa. May date pa ako kay Tina. <laughs> Whatever you learn, teach it to other people. Be nurtured, and then teach it to other people. The third is evangelism. Ministry to the world through evangelism. God has a global redemptive plan. Yung ginawa niya sa Genesis, God blessed them. God blessed Adam and Eve and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. May purpose si God nung create niya yung mundo at si Adam and Eve. Sabi niya, take dominion over the world. Naputol yun dahil pumasok yung sin. Jesus, came, Jesus Christ came to redeem the world. At pag-redeem ng world, kung sino man yung mga tinatawag na lang sarili na na kristyano sila, those Christians will go out to the world para yung plano ni God na ma-redeem yung world mangyayari. Ephesians 3.10 says, His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom, yung manifestation ng lahat ng essence of wisdom ni God should be made known to the rulers and authorities. It is our responsibility to make known who Jesus Christ is and the love of God. And so I summarize everything with this. Belonging to God, if you say you're a Christian, belonging to God leads to being used by Him for His purpose. Yun ang sadya nun. Now, I'd like to encourage you as we part ways today, Ask yourself, am I just coming or am I a member? Am I, do I belong? If you make the right decision, the decision is yours. If you make the right decision, the, the Lord says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, has been given to Jesus. And sabi niya, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all the commands that I have taught you. And surely, I am with you always. Not tomorrow, today, and always, I am with you until the very end of the age. Take the challenge as we part ways today. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters, for those of us who truly believe in the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, who truly believe we are followers of Jesus Christ, who have a mission, having been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, I pray, give us your Holy Spirit once more to overflow you. That as we part ways today, Lord, magagampanan namin in our work areas, in our schools, in our barkada, in our hospital, in our restaurants, in the jeepney, in the karinderia, sa arisari store, in the embassy, among yung mga review classmates namin. Lord, Make me be your mouthpiece so that in that area of society, those people will experience church. Thank you, Lord God. Ito ang aming panalangin and ang prayer namin. Mag-glorify ka once we have decided to act on this. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everyone says, Amen. And amen.